134. <laughs> that's right. You're listening to a podcast that's for you. If you play Magic the Gathering, whether you are so mad about the recent organized play announcements or you don't care at all about the recent organized play announcements, we are here for you. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And yeah, like Megan said, we had a bombshell hit the Magic community over yeah. the past week about organized play and some Ooh. huge changes that are going to be implemented there coming mm-hmm. out over the next couple of years. It's it's oh, a heck of a big announcement. It sure is. So we're going to talk all about it. But don't worry, that's not all. We're also going to talk about historic brawl. Yeah. Because we've got the good luck high five patron only brawl bash coming up on the 22nd. That's this Saturday. I'm so excited. If you want to play in it, all you've got to do is become a patron. Uh, at the 21st at midnight central time is the deadline for you to get yes. in to become a patron because you got to register for the you, tournament. You have to register for the tournament. Because <laughs> it starts on the so 22nd. So don't leave it until Friday. Yes. Do it before then. And uh, yeah, you become a patron for any dollar amount. Whatever you can afford it gets you into the Good Luck High Five family. Squirrel level, which is $5 a month or more, gets you access to our Discord to hang out with our awesome community you get other rewards like stickers and playmats yeah. as you go up yeah. the levels but yeah. the, the yeah. tournament yeah. is what we came here to talk about because it's going to be awesome i'm going to be playing in it if you play against me i'm a bounty you get a prize i am not going to be playing in it because i'm going to be behind the scenes freaking out about if i'm doing it right <laughs> nice yeah, you, but, know. you know, but that's I'm not the only prize you give. We're also gonna give prizes to other people. That's right. And you don't even like if you finish first, we're gonna give you a prize. Yes. But if you don't finish first, you might also still just get a random prize. Yeah, this is six rounds of fun. Bring your most fun historic brawl deck. Yes. Uh, don't bring your spiky one. Leave that in the digital locker for this weekend because we would want to have a good right. time. We just want to party. Yeah. So a patron of any dollar amount, you can sign up for a year, get a discount, whatever you want to do. Patreon.com slash GLHF magic. I'm super stoked for this tourney. So we're going to get you ready yes. with some cool historic decks, historic brawl decks you might want to consider because it's a really fun format where you can do a whole bunch of silly stuff and like kind of just really be yourself in magic by expressing yourself through your deck building um, in a way that sometimes you really can't in histo- in a format like just yeah. plain old historic or a standard or something like that. It's true. So Yeah become a patron we thank you so much if you have become a patron since our last episode yes and thank you so much specifically to dr unks alfredo drew christian thomas other christian yay and aaron for either becoming new patrons or increasing their patreon pledge thank you all so so much for literally in the past week making this show happen that's right uh you make the show come out of your cat's mouth dogs but uh yes. bird speak uh ear radio ears whatever it is yeah. you make it happen every single week i would thank believe you. that birds have radio ears <laughs> Because you can't see them. I don't know if you were like secretly a bird's ears are a radio. I'd be like, that seems right. Like what do I know about birds? They're (laughs) bird fact. You know, the birds that fly over the ocean migrate from like Australia to other places in the world. Uh And you're like, how do they do? How? How does this bird do? Well, the bird will kind of put its brain half to sleep for like, and other birds will like have their brain sleep for microseconds. Sleep and wake, sleep and wake, sleep and wake, sleep and wake. And that's how they make the entire journey without like, you know, crashing the ocean because they're asleep. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) Isn't that wild? I'm always (laughs) micro-sleep. Megan's currently micro-sleeping right now. On off, on off, on off, on off, on off. (laughs) Anyway, yes, thank you, patrons. Uh, Thank you as well to one of our sponsors, Card Kingdom. Head on over to cardkingdom.com slash GLHF for anything in your magical life. If you want to buy some more boxes of Strixhaven, if you want Strixhaven singles, those cool mystical archive uh, card styles, which is what we call them on Arena in real life, I don't know, cards. Yeah, just like cards. Awesome you, cards. <laughs> cards. You can play in Historic yes. now, and we saw them all over Historic this past Card weekend. Card Kingdom is so wonderful. They not only sponsor this show, but they make so much of our other content possible yeah. by providing us with commander decks so that we can battle them against each other with videos for you all, by providing us with boxes so we can do box opening videos. They're just really an all-around wonderful sponsor that supports us in so many ways and in so many kinds of content that we can create for you. Yeah, so go check them out. Cardkingdom.com slash GLHF, whatever you order, ask for a sticker or a token in your order and they will give you one for free. 
What did you say? I was micro sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, let's talk about the changes to organized play in magic and what that might end up meaning Ooh, for you. That's right. So this was a huge announcement that came out last Thursday. Yeah. Um, it's a whole article called Esports Transitions and Getting Back to Gathering. Yeah, this is on the magic.gg website if you want to read it for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, magic Esports also tweeted it out if you want to check it out if you haven't read it yet. But this created such a huge effect in the magic community. Um, it really did. <laughs> you probably already heard about it. But yes. yeah, we want to talk about our thoughts about it. Yeah. Um, first up, I just want to like touch on the part that I feel like was not as big of a deal because it's a little bit more like like spacey like some time out in the future yeah 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 um which is the back to the gathering part which is where they talk about kind of the eventual trajectory for getting back to in-person play right after this pandemic they're talking about like look we know the gathering is a strong suit of yes. magic and we want to make sure that that is something that we focus on once we can all get back together and play in person consistently yeah Absolutely. And which it's just it's just nice to hear. I feel like, right, there's been a lot of speculation from people over the past year of just yeah. like, oh, no, are they going to move to only digital? And it's nice to know that, like, no, they understand that there's like this huge swath of players that are not interested in playing right. digital magic because they're about, you know, sitting down with your friends at the commander table. They're about going to an event and getting to meet like lots of cool cosplayers and take photos and like get your prints signed by artists and stuff like that. Or just people who are just at home and they're like, oh, I bought this box and I'm going to yeah. open it and make a deck out of it. Like exactly. All these kinds of people exist and play the game. And so they like they say that, you know, digital is going to be part of the landscape moving forward. But so is paper. It's going to yeah. be like a combination. So if you were somebody out there that was really worried that paper events were going away, because of arena do not worry yeah. at least like in the near future like this is their vision for them to be integrated yeah. and they they do talk a lot about how it's going to focus more local for like local and regionally first so it's not like you know we're about to see a return to like a pro tour that brings everybody in yeah Gosh. from all around the world but it's more just like hey making sure that we get fnm back back right. up and running right making sure that like maybe we start having something regional that like who who knows um because we don't know what the structure of the pro you know situation looks like yeah but it's like maybe that's something like a ptq or something like that or like an old school one i loved ptqs Ooh, we had such a good time oh they were so fun yeah so more stuff like that because you know it's international travel is still off the table yeah who knows for when, a while when that honestly will be yeah. able to happen so like that's a huge no. question mark <laughs> yeah. beyond wizards decision making about what they want to do but pandemic level yes what it, yeah so yeah <laughs> just what yeah just <laughs> <laughs> what is the yeah. takeaway there? <laughs> and they also talk about uh, like like how successful command fests were before the pandemic. Yeah. And just sort of like opening up the idea of what it means to have like an in-person gathering. Yes. I think, like, yeah. I mean, the success of Command Fests yeah. at, at GPs cannot be understated in the fact that Commander is the number one way that people play Magic these days if yeah. they're playing a form that, you know, exists and they didn't just like make up, make up, it up. <laughs> on their own, which is totally fine. But uh, yeah. this um, talking a little bit about the, these decisions and about what they're doing moving forward, I think um, I talked about this on the upkeep of Mark Rosewater tweeted out that only 10% of people who play Magic the Gathering had ever attended any kind of sanctioned event. And that goes down to as small as something like an FNM or an in-store draft. Can you believe Wild. that number? Wild. It just seemed, I mean, like, we're so entrenched in the magic community, right? Yeah. But, like, that number to me seems impossible. But, it's wild. You know, I, I guess it must be true. Yeah. They have the data. I mean, oh, it's just unbelievable. It's so small. Yeah. But you know what? I don't know. Other other people are weird. <laughs> Just play with the people you know. <laughs> well, the, the, the reason I bring this up is to kind of get like a little window into their decision making here. Yes. And I think I think that it's fair to say that they were like, hey, hold on. Hold the dang phone. We're going to talk about the OP change in a second. But like, hold the phone. We are spending like, what, 90 percent of our time focusing on 10 percent of our players. Yeah, that's, that's maybe a little unbalanced for what we want to do yeah. as a company. And maybe we need to be serving a wider swath of players better. Um, and thinking about the return on our investment, because we are a company, our investment in this pro scene yeah. and what are we getting out of it? 
For sure. So, which brings us to the big cuts. Yes. <laughs> Get out the giant scissors normally used to Shink. open buildings. <laughs> yeah. When you say, you mean like cut the ribbon at a grand opening? Yeah. It sounds like you want to use them like a crowbar. <laughs> Get out the giant scissors. We got a crowbar open this door. I mean, they sure crowbarred it open. I'll tell you that. And then dumped it in the garbage. Yeah, they did. Um, <laughs> this is a weird, that's a weird metaphor. Yeah. I don't Anyways, know. We've mixed a few so together. What they're saying is that essentially heading into the 2021, 22 season, um, there are not going to be league weekends or a gauntlet anymore. MPL and rivals will still exist. Everyone who's qualifying for one of those things this year will still get their, you know, their player fees and they'll still get entry into all of the set championships, mm-hmm. which is what they're moving on to. Yeah. So there will be three set championships with a $450,000 prize pool each. What the way it, we're, we're right now, just in case you're confused about years and stuff, we're in the 2020 2021 magic yes. season right now, which ends with the world championship, which I think is going to happen probably sometime around October, November, yeah. right? And then once the world championship happens, then boom, we start the new season, which will be 2021 2022, which will last again until like that October, November period. Yeah. Um, and so, right, like uh, MPL and Rivals players. You know, they've been playing all this year. People have been fighting to get into the MPL, into the Rivals League. It will exist next year. But like Megan said, it's pretty kind of much in name only. Yeah. You know, they'll be. I mean, and salary. And salary. (laughs) Look, they're going to get their salary. Yes. So like. Yeah. I mean, pretty good deal for them, obviously. (laughs) But the big change after that is that after the 21-22 season. Yeah. No more pro. Done. No more MPL. Done. No more rivals. Gone. Um, and Elite. this was what caused the biggest yes. stir. Yeah. Um, with people being, I feel like, you know, in some cases there was like some messaging that was confusing. I think there were people who were like, oh, the pro scene is going away entirely. Right. Which is not the case. Um, Magic has been, they've been talking about like on here, they talk about the transition season being used to kind of look look forward towards like more open, less top heavy system. Yeah. Because the MPL was an extremely top heavy system, right? So top heavy. There, well, we not can, even a hundred players. No, we can get into the issues of why this failed, but like, um, yeah, it was a failure. Like, like let's put it. Yes. Let's say let's what, call it is. It what it was. It was a failure. Like yeah. people didn't show up to watch the stuff, the, the league weekends as much. People yeah. didn't seem to be super interested in what, and what was happening in the MPL and rivals, how you qualify qualified was extremely opaque and hard to understand. Yes. People kind of felt like it made the dream of being a pro inaccessible. Right. And it literally was for the first iteration of it, like because they're just like, boom, you guys are in the MPL. Yes. Right. Yeah. They just took the cut from the top of like the pro standards. Right. It wasn't like, hey, in a year, we're going to take this so you can work towards it. It was just like, hey, tomorrow. (laughs) It was basically tomorrow. (laughs) We're going to just take it. Boom. So you like you honestly couldn't. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, there was that. Uh, and I think the lack, I think that what what people loved about organized play in the old pro tour system and everything was like, I can see a path to how to get there. Yeah. Now, was that as easy to understand as people nowadays would have you believe it was? No, no, absolutely not. (laughs) Let's just, I just want to take a second to call out all the people who are just like, I miss the old pro system, buddy. I saw your tweets hating on it when it existed, okay? Yeah, like, you can pretend, you can go back and delete all of those critiques of the old pro system, like, illicitly from your account, but we remember. We remember. <laughs> yeah, the reason the MPL and the Rivals League was created, I think, was to show off Arena for one, but also because Magic players had been calling for Magic to be a job, essentially, yes. for a long time, because being a pro on what we called the train back then, like, going to GPs, grinding your points, getting to the pro tour hoping to win that was a really tough lifestyle it was yes. not a piece of cake it was a lot of time it was a lot of travel travel it was energy. a lot of like money for not any guaranteed return all yeah. the time so it was it was rough some people managed yeah. to make it work and what the, their definition of make it work is i mean is going to be different for everybody yes but honestly like looking back on it with rose colored glasses i don't think is necessarily the way to no. to approach this moving forward 
you didn't like it. <laughs> he, I, it was tough. It was also hard for like an, an average person to like go up and be like, wait, oh, that's cool. That's a cool tournament. How do I play in that? And you're like, well, pull up a chair. All right. There's this thing called a PPDQ. Yeah. Like it was, it was still pretty, uh, I think, hard to comprehend. And yeah. I would advocate for making it easier yet to be able to do those things. Yeah. Does that mean that there it's going to be a flatter system and that being a magic player as a job won't exist so much anymore? Probably. Yes, that I feel like that was something that they like pros have been talking about. They were explicitly told. Yeah. And it does sound like this is reflecting that. Yeah. Of just like, hey, you're not going it's not going to be the income of a job. Yes, they said we're not interested in making magic be a job for all of you. Yes. We don't want to subsidize that, I think, is the language they used. But, like, yeah, I think that people just made it a job before because they, like, could cobble it together. Thanks. Yeah, that's what they did. And and it was, uh, yeah, it's just, it's interesting because it's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense if you're also reading the part where they're like, hey, we want it to be more wide open. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people were... Um, we're very taken aback by the language of just like, we don't want to have a pro lifestyle. Well, it's like, okay, they're not saying that they don't want to support prizes for top performances. Correct. They're not going to like completely get rid of tournaments. They're saying that if we want more people to be able to qualify for the top event, then obviously you're not going to be able to depend as much on your income for it because there's going to be a much wider pool of people who are taking in that money. Will pro players probably be able to exist on some kind of weird, their own deal level? Yeah, yes, probably. they did before. Because, Pro yeah. And they probably will again. Yeah, we, we don't, the reason we're saying question mark to a lot of this is we don't know. Because we don't know. <laughs> because in classic Wizards fashion, yeah. <laughs> with the announcement of this, uh, they said they wanted to announce it because they wanted to give their MPL and Rivals players enough time to do to know about all this stuff. Yeah. They, they did not announce what will be replacing it in the future. Yes. So we don't know. It is a lot of speculation. We don't know what organized play will look like. I, I've, I've heard Blake, who is one of the people who works at Wizards of the Coast and who's dealing with all this, say that the old organized play system is on the table. But I honestly, if you ask me, don't yeah. think they're going to go back to that. I think they'll at the very least modify it yeah. in a pretty big way. I just wanted, like, also, as we're talking about, like, how this is, ha like, how this is happening and, like, why it is happening, I also want to uh, take into account a phrase that you used, which I really liked um, when we were texting about it the other day, ah. which is that, every, like, the community does have a problem with hating these systems into the ground. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they have a problem with hating everything into the ground, they honestly. Hate everything into the ground, but, like, especially the organized play systems, yeah. like, I don't know why you would think that that this system is going to continue to exist if all you did was complain about it. Yeah, there's why no way. Why would there be any incentive for them to continue MPL and Rivals when the feedback that they've gotten about that system in every single respect has been negative? Super negative. Why on <clears> earth? <throat> and then why would you go and turn around and be like, oh my goodness, I'm so surprised. How could they cancel this? You had a um, hand in that. Duh. You had a hand in it if all you ever did was complain about it. Yeah, Magic uh, wider community, not you dear listeners, you're all great, but like yes. definitely has a negativity problem and I think this can probably be extended to all of gaming, honestly. So like, yeah. I think, yeah, let's Which just... Which isn't to say don't criticize things. No. But it's saying one, if you're going to only criticize, understand that like what you're doing is maybe driving that thing into the ground yeah they're i mean they listen they care about what the player base says exactly. right because you're all where the money comes from and if they don't have that they don't exist anymore yes. they're gonna make decisions that you disagree with because they are focused on cash at the end of the day because they need to survive but like also they want to make you happy and so Overall. if you're like, I only hate this thing, they're going to be like, message right. received. Deleted. We're going to get rid of it. Yeah, it honestly came as 0% surprise to me. Uh, agreed. When I saw this, I was like, oh, that makes sense. We're just, I, you know, we're not getting the numbers from these events. People seem to be angry about it at every yes, turn. Nobody the cares. They say they can't understand the system. Yeah, they're going to take that away. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, not surprising. Um, and I also... I want to say, like, I I totally sympathize with a set of people who are like, oh, no, my my job is going away. Yeah. 
but also your job is going away in one year. Yeah, they <laughs> one and definitely a half years. had enough notice for sure. And yes, so I don't know. I just want to say, like, is it mean? Maybe. Maybe I'm a mean <laughs> person. Okay? But, like, if you can't say, hey, everyone got fired today when what you got was an announcement that in a year and a half they're sunsetting the program that you're in. <laughs> I once got let go from a job Uh, the day before my birthday, literally completely out of the blue, and I had to pack up that moment and leave. Jeez. And that was just getting, like, my like my job didn't exist. They were like, we're restructuring. Your job doesn't exist. Go wipe Bye. the computer, pack up your desk, and get the heck out of our office. And I was <laughs> like, what? Yeah, this is about a thousand miles away from that <laughs> happening. Good grief. So, like, I don't know. I think sometimes everybody needs a little perspective. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it is a long notice. It's a long notice. Yes. And, like. It was a program that wasn't, it didn't seem to be making you happy. No. I think is the other part of it. That's I don't kind think of the like, pros who were in it were happy. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm talking about the people who are like, oh, now I can't do this anymore. It's like, I, I don't know why you're upset because you never, I mean, I get why you're upset, but I like, y- you've never been happy. Why, why are you sad about this thing that's leaving that didn't even satisfy you? I think they probably wish they still had a way to make a quote unquote living as a magic player, whatever that means to them. Like, oh, the, there will still be a way for me to be able to yeah, do this full like time. Like some kind of reassurance. And there is not that. That yeah. does not exist. And in fact, we're told don't rely on that. So yeah. that I think is part of the reason. But yeah, I don't think that m- most of the pros or rivals really had a good time. They didn't particularly yeah. like the tournament structures and were very massively stressed out most of the time playing them. Yeah. As opposed to, um, going to Grand Prix, you could choose when you wanted to, if you needed to, whatever. Even though, I mean, there's a bunch of that negatives was also with that. Stressful. Because yeah. you got to travel and you might lose all of your money on that investment, etc. So there's been problems all the way around, from the old system to the new system. Yeah. We haven't found something that seems to satisfy, you know, everybody, or in fact, even a small minority of people in the end here. Yeah. With because this again, system. the majority is a set of people who don't care about this at all. Yeah, ninety percent, ninety percent. Um, <laughs> wild. And I it mean, wild. I'm one of the people who tweeted out a sad boy reaction to this because I was sad because in the end, you know, how, you know, how are our, our lives tied to organized play and pro yeah. play pretty tightly um, here at Good Luck High Five because we both work on coverage of pro events. Right. So, you know, it's a huge chunk of my income that just got deleted essentially and said it's not going to exist anymore and I really quite like the job so like this leaves me with a question mark and you with a question mark like are we going to do these events in the future yeah like maybe but do you know what Maria I have confidence that we're going to figure it out I hope so I believe I mean like there is no reason to say that they won't need coverage for like whatever kinds of events they want to showcase arena paper tournaments etc into the future for yeah. however when that happens who knows it could be yeah. as much as a year from now that they finally start putting everything together and organizing these things because of coronavirus because of everything else and these big changes so it's like a question mark not only for these players um and but also everybody who like works in these coverage events moving forward like money question (laughs) mark so you know it's a it's a community that's affected wider than wider than the players and certainly for everybody who likes watching these tournaments like that's true i mean there still will be tournaments to watch i think what's gonna happen is that we're gonna see other people eventually pick up the ball and stick and say, I will be hosting these tournaments. Um, yeah. I will be broadcasting them. Is this like a weird foot polo that they're playing? They're playing a game of um, hoop and stick, but with also a ball <laughs> in this okay. metaphor. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> they're hitting a ball through a hoop with a stick. Does this game exist? <laughs> I, I maintain that what you're describing sounds like polo, except that you're just running around. Yeah, it sounds like I'm polo without field horses. Hockey. Field, okay, oh yeah, field that's hockey. already a game, and it's called field hockey. But there's no, there's not a hoop. It's a net. That's true. <laughs> okay, here's the new sport that's invented. Yeah, everybody's got hoops. Everybody's got sticks. There's a ball. <laughs> you try and get your ball through the opposing team's hoops with your stick, but <laughs> they can also use their sticks. Are and you balls. describing ground Quidditch? <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe. I feel kind like that's it, what you're describing. Is. Yeah. Anyway, I just invented a new sport. It's called okay. ground quidditch. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Check it out. It might be fun. It sounds a little <sighs> violent. It probably will be. There's no checking. Um, yeah, so like, what I'm trying to say is that we might see uh, other third party uh, tournament organizers pick yeah. up pick up the reins here and start organizing their own tournaments. And we've seen that in the past with things like DreamHack, Star City Games, Channel Fireball. I mean, but with the pandemic, that's all a huge question because those yeah. are like mostly paper tournaments. So like, who the heck knows what will the system be replaced yeah. with in your dream world, Megan? What is organized play and all this look like in the future? Um, it looks like a set of people <laughs> who and were at tournaments being like, hey, we need content for social. Like, can you give us like, will you talk to us? Will you be engaging and fun? It's full of people who are engaging and fun and enthusiastically <laughs> say yes, instead of acting like I'm the worst thing that ever happened to them. Hey, that would be great. That would be great. A plus. I don't get frustrated with pros on my <laughs> job at all. Not every pro, okay, but I just I remember Lucas Esper tweeted today like oh, that he was retiring, yeah. and we love Lucas. We Esper. do love Lucas Esper. What a nice, great guy. Yeah, a plus guy. Um, but yeah, there um, are definitely some of them that are great, and then some of them that you're just like, I don't know why you're acting like this. Three minutes of your time is the biggest ask that anyone has ever made of you in your life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I mean, like, honestly, maybe part of the system, like, enabled people to get a little bit up on the high horse. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, anyways, happen. OK, but aside from that. Yeah, that's that's a uh, good luck. High five based slash content yeah, based like content based of just like, I just wish that everyone there was nice. <laughs> that would be great. I would love that it. That would be my goal. A plus. Um, gosh, you know what? I. I honestly, there were parts of the old Pro Tour system that I liked. Mm -hmm. Like, I honestly would like going back to, you have four Pro Tours, or call them whatever you want, yeah. set championships tied to the release of the set. Yep. So that we get to see a high-level draft Yep. Um, of that set, like, right when it's right away. fresh. Um, yeah, and then aside from that, if I'm, like, talking about how people qualify... Like, I would honestly kind of like to see something more of like, imagine this, like a magic fest or some kind of event like that. Yep. That is like, I'm thinking of kind of like Gen Con. Yes. Right. Where you go and you can play cool tournaments, magic tournaments even at Gen Con. Yeah. But you can also play like a giant, like, you know, I once played a game of... Um, you played it too at a giant tournament. At That's true. But I'm talking about like the other stuff that you do. What's the, what's the train game? Maria ticket to ride. I once played like we once played a giant ticket to ride game that was like as it was a giant floor mat and the die was like huge and you rolled it. I played the huge Catan. Oh, that's the one I'm thinking. Of. Oh, yeah. Yes. It was next to giant ticket. to oh, Ride. OK. Yeah. Um, right where you could do stuff like that. So I'm imagining an event where the the qualification for the pro stuff is like side events, essentially, ah. that you can register for. It's like, hey, there's going to be a 9 a.m. PTQ. You can go register for that. But the majority of the floor here is like, there's the command zone that you can go play in. There's the artists. Like, here's a whole stage with like cosplayers and stuff like yeah. that. Here's like a section. Here's like a whole section of draft. Um, Yeah. That's interesting. So it's kind of like taking the GP structure and kind of just inverting it. Yes, exactly. So that instead of side events being like the side events, the PTQs are the, the side, side events. events. Oh. Because then also you can run more of them. So it's not like you're trying to just spike one GP. Yeah. You know, um, there's like multiple opportunities for you to enter this thing if you want to. Yeah. I think that's the big question. Like, how do we... Uh, like, cause I too would love to be, have like the big pro tour like events tied yeah. to the release of the set, please not five months later. Ugh. Um, cause yeah. nobody wants to watch that. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, and saying, Hey, do you want to qualify to play in this thing? Here's a tournament. 
the real question comes when people like want to reward consistent good finishes that aren't spiking. Yeah. That's where we get into all the complicated stuff about like fractional invites and that kind of thing and yeah. points and where are we at? No, oh, I'm silver, I'm gold or whatever. And we start to get back to the health system. So yeah. if I had to guess, I would say they would probably be more interested in a system like this. This is pretty flat. Like if yeah. you top eight this tournament, congrats, you get to go play in the quote unquote pro tour. Yeah, exactly. Um, and if you don't, well, whatever, you get some kind of prize. Yeah. So that descent disincentivizes people from doing well consistently and uh, rewards people for doing well one time or whatever, um, yeah. which is what but I. But also the one time isn't so inaccessible as like yes. only being a GP and it's they're so infrequent that you can travel to them or something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, do you know what? Like, let's throw regional PT, like not regional RPTQs, but like, let's throw those old big PTQs in there. I love Where those. the top spot yeah. goes, like gets an invite. Yeah. Agree. Those were so fun. Yeah, and I, I would, I would err towards the side of um, spiking and doing stuff like this as, as opposed to like, maybe you have some kind of invention to get people there yeah, over like time, some, but something akin to like the old pro points system, right? Yeah, but and yeah. you know what? There's also still obviously in this world, I'm imagining like you still have the. Um, you know, like the monthly qualifier via arena or something like sure. that. Sure. Yeah. More, more opportunities to qualify for tournaments on arena. Yeah. And then, you know, in the future, both arena tournaments and paper tournaments that you can, you yeah. know, watch. I think that'd be super cool. Like maybe you even have a weekend that's like arena fest where it's like, again, oh. it's like at 9 a.m. and at noon and at another time, there's going to be instead of just having like one big qualifier weekend that you had to queue for. Yeah. You can just keep kind of like the arena opening open. But like not I love constant, that idea. but it's like, oh, you can enter the 10 a.m. queue. Oh, if like you scrubbed out, you could enter the noon queue. You can enter the 3 p.m. And so it's just like one weekend of like all these rolling events. Yeah. And maybe there's like other cool stuff for people who, again, don't aren't interested in like the PTQ aspect. But it's like, oh, hey, for this weekend, we'll also have an open historic brawl queue Yay! that you can just like hop in anytime you want. And just or play. Stuff like that. Or like you get special sleeves, sleeves if you log in and play this weekend. Exactly. And stuff like that. Ooh, speaking of that, moving forward for these tournaments that they watch, <laughs> I'm telling you, if the those tournaments are not advertised in your main client are not even like uh, not giving away drops for coming and watching for a yeah. certain number of hours, sleeves, gems. I don't care. Draft passes. Like, oh, yeah, we've got to integrate that stuff. I don't know why it hasn't happened. There's probably something far above my pre grade that's going on. But what I'm saying is like, let's figure this out people, yes. to integrate our Get systems in there. You're watching a paper tournament. Oh, check it out. If you watch for five hours, you get a hundred gems. Ooh. Ooh. Where am I going to spend those on arena? The digital <laughs> client. Look, now we're holding hands. Anyway, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> if we're integrating so highly in the future, let's actually yeah. integrate. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I hear you big time. So I think there's lots of opportunities to create a new system that can be cool for everybody. I don't think we have to say, oh, we're, we're killing high level play altogether because I don't think that does anybody any favors. No. It's great to have something some people who are excellent at the game to watch, like, you know, people watch the NFL, right? And we're not it's like <laughs> the average player who watches the NFL compete has never once been to a pro training camp to learn how to play football. I don't know what you're talking about, Maria. <laughs> Before I watched a basketball game, I went and tried to play professional <laughs> basketball. So, like, I don't think that's a fair metric. I'm not saying that's what they're thinking yeah. of. But you know what I mean? Like, people still like to watch the best I people play the game. I am one full foot too short to play professional <laughs> basketball. Probably a foot at least. Like, minimum you know, one have, full foot. Have you seen that chart that's like, if you're this height, you have this percent chance of yes, getting in the I'm NBA? Yes, I'm talking about that all the time. It's so interesting. Shout out to Athena, who was the first person who ever told us oh, about that. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, it goes along with the classic hypothetical of like if you could add how any oh, yeah. amount or subtract any amount from your height like would you my answer is yes i would make myself wnba height <laughs> would you play in the wnba i would Do certainly you... try <laughs> i mean why not? i would put myself into like whatever height it was where you have like a 70 percent chance because you're just so tall you don't even have to be exceptionally good at the game you're just you're tall just enough tall. to like and then you are good because you can yeah. just like raise your hand like not even full extension and then you dunk <laughs> i do really like i do like watching dunk compilations <laughs> i watch i watch nba dunk compilations honestly it is like, the best part of, of the nba it's let's great. get real it's great stuff <laughs> did you see the video of the guy who dunked himself no 
Yeah, that was a pretty good one. All right. I'll have to go back and watch that. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so what was my point? My point I don't was know. we don't have to be like, we only want peanut butter. We only want jelly. It doesn't have to be like that. No. We can serve the wider community in a better way that we haven't been serving them in the past. Have a great sandwich. And still have a great sandwich by saying, yeah. guess what? We're going to put some pro stuff on here. And by pro, I'm using that in quotes. I'm meaning players who are really excellent, high level play situation. Yeah. Um, will it be their full time job? Probably not. Maybe for a handful, they'll yeah. be able to make it work. Um, but I still think that's enough to be able to give a complete meal to everybody who's watching. And by meal, I mean sandwich, because that's a complete meal in my book. Yeah, man. Why wouldn't it be? I mean, seriously, peanut butter and cheese. Hit me up. I want a BLT. <laughs> You know what? I thought you were going to call me out on peanut butter and cheese and you did it. So that's great. I thought about it, but I was like, it will be more surprising if I don't. (laughs) (laughs) If I just let it slide, everyone's going to be like, what happened? (laughs) Let's talk about historic brawl because I don't know if you heard this, everybody, but Google Guy 5 has got a historic brawl tournament coming up this Saturday for patrons. That's right. Oh, I'm so excited. You all, I get on... uh, my little melee organizer like <laughs> portal all the time just to like see how many entries there are because it makes me so happy. Yeah, I'm so excited for this yes. tournament. Um, um, it's it's super exciting. And Maria, yes. you've been thinking about what you're going to play. Yeah, so last week I said I was going to play a vampire deck, but I might have lied to you all because there's so many cool historic brawl decks there's that I, very cool I just decks. can't choose. So yeah. I have been looking through them. We're going to talk to you about a few of them today to get you excited. Even if you're not going to play in the tournament, what a cool format to like build online on arena and build with your friend and you can play against each other. Cause you can't, there's not like a continuous historic brawl queue mm-hmm. or like whatever. If you want to play in real life, you can do that too. Let's talk about Cody, the vociferous codex. Maria spicy. This I'm into this. Seems like a super cool brawl deck. Oh, I I am all about it. Okay. So Cody, our friend, mm-hmm. you remember Cody from draft, right? Yes. Showed yes. up and my, sealed pool and uh, made my day bad twice twice, twice. yes yeah. cody um yeah you can tap to activate add wooberg to your mana pool and then you get to cast a spell of lesser mana value from the top of your deck till you hit it for free yeah um which is pretty cool and so this deck has <laughs> cody as the commander and then a bunch of really busted and wild spells like you can hit off cody it is this is great and when i was playing so last week there was still the historic brawl event yes. going on and i played against a cody deck and like it was it was busted oh was it really it was so good because the problem is that you constantly you always have to kill cody immediately oh you gotta kill cody they activate it you're just <laughs> they activate it once and you're like i can no longer win this game <laughs> yeah so like what spells are we cast in here we've got time warp Ooh, i mean ser- we've like, got unburial rights of course you've got mind's desire which is kind of spicy because you do have some one mana stuff like ah. faithless looting and thought seize. like maybe you've just got up to a lot of mana yeah and you can mind's desire for a bunch emergent ultimatum all of the ul- all yeah, the ultimatums. ultimatum They're genesis just in ultimatum here. inspired ultimatum ruinous ultimatum omniscience oh great seagate restoration cool Ugh. languish kill everything it's just mizik's mastery someone got me with this <laughs> big the cody deck got me with this i was I'd been killing their cody and they but they'd still been casting big spells but i was like at least you're not c- cascading them and then they cast this overloaded and i was like Never mind. Rip Never mind. Me. Rip. <laughs> yeah, Overload of Mystic's Mastery is really the cherry on top of any magic game. Ugh. Let's be real. It's like, it's great. So, this is like just an, an example of something super powerful, super weird, mm-hmm. and fun that you can do in Historic Brawl, which is taking all of the cards that are, you know, legal and historic in um, Arena and then being like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put a commander on this. Boom. Cool format. Last week on stream, we built one that was Vadrock, which is the three mana dragon. Oh, um, yeah. The Jeskai dragon that you can mutate and it casts a uh, spell with mana value three or less from your graveyard. But then you can like Lord Rackus, So you like cast one then you get one back. Great. It was very spicy. This is a fun deck that showed up at the on League weekend this past yes, weekend. There was a really cool like Jeskai <laughs> dragons list. So, yeah. Like, mutate dragons. I play, I've been playing around with it in historic since I saw it. And it is a really, really weird deck. There's even a even more combo version of it that exists. But I was like, hey, show this deck, show this deck. And I'm so happy <laughs> that we did because it turned out to be a super cool match. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, I also really 
I want to see this deck, which is a Quintorius deck. Oh, Quintorius! Because obviously Quintorius is great. And so there's lots of cards that get things out of your graveyard <laughs> for value. You have Grim Lava Mancer, which is great. Um, you have uh, Phoenix of Ash, which you can escape. Like, escape goes hand in hand with Quintorius. Wow, if you're like, I love Lorehold, but Lorehold's just not giving me enough ways to get stuff out of the graveyard. Yes. Here you go. I love this. That it has Squee. Squee. So you can cast Squee from Exile. So you can use Squee for like Grim Lava Mancer, right? Like exile it from your graveyard, get your two damage, and then just cast it again. Oh, I love this deck. Oh, or like if you cast it from your graveyard, you're going to get a Quintorius trigger. I am super into this. This deck it, also plays yeah. whole free, which makes everything into spirits. Um, once they get killed, oh yeah, they just come right on back. I love it. Wow, this one might end up having to be it. Megan, this deck looks awesome. This deck looks so cool, and then it has like tons of stuff, like Faithless Looting, which you can cast from your graveyard, which is great. Um, oh, Thrill of Possibility, like lots of ways to draw cards. Reconstruct History. One of my All favorite right. spells. I'm sold. This deck looks I'm super, super cool. into this. A plus. Yeah. This is a 100% all in lore hold historic brawl deck and I yeah. am here Make for it. those spirits. That, that deck's super cool. Ooh, there's a deck out there that makes use of, I haven't thought about this amazing, you love this beautiful, card. Beautiful, perfect card. <laughs> and so long, I'm like ashamed that I have not thought about Tatiova, Benthic Druid, in so long. Oh, she's great. Tatiova is perfect. <laughs> um, this was, She's from Dominaria. Yeah. Uh, three green blue for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life and draw a card. Splash her in your sealed pool. Always, you always played Tatiova. You always Tachova played her. Tatiova was an uncommon and so busted. Slam it. <laughs> great, great card. Ooh, it has things like uh, Jolrail, Monvoli, Recluse. Which, who's from M21. Makes cats? Makes cats when you draw your second card each oh, turn. Yeah. Ooh, it has Zimone, Quandrix, Prodigy. Oh, uh, this has some great stuff. Azusa, Lost But Seeking. This like, obviously seems very some, strong. Yeah, some very busted things with that. Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, obviously, because you're putting so many lands ramp, into play. Ramp, ramp, ramp. Crater Hoof. Oh, the Because what are you going to do with all those lands? You're going to Crater Hoof. Oh, Maria, I'm really into this. This one seems cool. Yes. I, you know what, Joriel, the one volley recluse who makes kitty cats, just reminded me, I'm like, you could make a draw two deck. Normally we just make that in is it colors, but you could make it in teamer colors and oh, put yeah, her in could. there. It would be great. You know, playing um, your Iron Craig Pyromancer to yes. do three to everything when you draw your Improbable second card. Improbable Alliance. Improbable Alliance. Oh, I love a teamer draw two deck. Ooh, that would be cool. That sounds very good. Okay. That sounds very spicy. Some, and like maybe if you built it and brought it, I would give you a prize. <laughs> Not that I employ mm. favoritism in any way, mm. shape, or form when awarding prizes for this tournament. Have we wink, given wink. Megan too much power? <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when I become a tournament <laughs> organizer. <laughs> I mean, just having you talk about being like, I open up my tournament organizer and I look at the people who have registered. <laughs> it's like, Megan, you were born to be a tournament organizer. <laughs> Earlier, I was showing Maria the spreadsheet for our fundraiser. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was like, look at all the tabs at the look bottom. Look at this spreadsheet. Look at all these ways that I've entered data. Megan, I think we have stumbled <laughs> upon perhaps a secret string. Oh, my goodness. But I would go nuts if I had to deal with all the people who misregister for a tournament. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's a that's a problem. <laughs> I've been at the stage on like on the stage working at a GP. Yeah. And I hear all the people who come up with a question where it's like, this was user error. I mean, like, bless those judges oh, at those really? tournaments. Honestly, they had, they had so much to deal with all the time. Mm -hmm. So our tournament for our patrons is uh, labeled as Freeform now. Um, we yes. switched it in the tournament organization. It used to be historic, but that didn't let you do some stuff because yeah. there's some. But make sure you take issues. a look. Um, I have entered the entire ban list like yeah. into the tournament info. Um, you can also just look at it on Wizard's site. So make sure that you know what is banned so that we don't have to come along and be like, tisk tisk. And also, since we label it as Freeform, please play a historic brawl deck. <laughs> I'll come. I'll, I'm, I will come You'll by. Come and by. Tisk, okay. tisk you if you if you do not. Okay. So I'll send you a little message via melee. That's like, 
Hey. I see the deck you registered. I see you've registered see Tainted Pact in Historic. You may not. <laughs> you may not well, play wait, that. Well, wait, you can right now. Oh, I suppose you can. But I mean, like... Can you play it in... Historic Brawl? I don't know if it's banned there or not. I don't remember off the top of my head. But I mean, why would you? This is a fun tournament. You, you don't have nice. fun by clicking exile every card in your deck until yeah. you're, you've decked yourself. <laughs> Yeah. It's true. You know, so yeah, yeah. Uh, those are just a few. We have barely scraped the surface on the top of historic brawl decks. There's so many you can do. You can find one online. You can build your own. The possibilities are almost endless. It's really cool. It's time for our Ultra Pro moment. That's right. Thank you so much to our sponsor, Ultra Pro, who has such cool stuff. I want to talk about, so last week on our stream, we gave away a whole bunch of different boxes of swag from Ultra Pro. Yes. And I just had so much fun making them because I got to do this like little combo of a play mat, uh, sleeves, and a deck box Cool for each of the... Um, donations. D- yeah, donations. But for each of the colleges. Oh, so yeah. The sleeves are the dragon. The deck box had this cool thing where, like, on one side it was one dean, and then it like morphed. Oh, yeah, and the on other the other dean. side it was the other dean, and then the play mats were the command. Oh, like the great. command for the college. Great. And it was just so cool. So if you want to rep your college, and but it's not even the same art for each one. So it's like you've got the dragon, you've got the command, you've got the deans. It was just awesome. We're we're doing the college cup champ. Championship IRL here with exactly. Ultra Pro. Honestly. Yeah, it was super, super cool. They've got so much great stuff. I'm yes. holding this adorable little owl uh, life pad notebook. And with the return to in-store play, you're going to want one of these to track your life total on yeah. because you'll feel so cool. But also you can keep track of anything you want to remember that happened during the game. Uh, sideboarding decisions, that kind of thing. If you're playing constructed format, I yep. found that to be really helpful to go through after a tournament. Um, and also... Like, plug, come and watch our stream coming up this Wednesday. Yeah, because maybe if you donate to our Doctors Without Borders fundraiser, you might get some swag. Yeah, come on over twitch.tv slash GLHF Magic <laughs> starting around noon. We're yeah. going to be doing a stream and a final push for our Doctors Without Borders fundraiser. Yes. You donate, you get swag. I think that seems pretty cool because you're seems also being entered into a drawing for other stuff. Yes. Wow. Pretty great. Well, everybody, that's this episode of Good Luck High Five. That's right. Thank you all so much for joining us on yet another wild ride. Seriously. Choo-choo, here comes the organized play train, and it only goes in one direction. (laughs) I feel like we've been on Wild Thing. Yes. Oh, man. Wild Thing is a roller coaster at Valley Fair, Yeah. which is an amusement park. Here in Minnesota. It's a great coaster. Oh, Wild Thing is great. It's really good. Do you remember the time that we just got to ride it all like constantly? Yes. Because it was raining. Because it was raining. There was <laughs> nobody else there because it was like 6 p.m. and raining hard. Oh, it was great. <laughs> Ultimate so nonstop Wild Thing yes. rides. I remember I got in the car afterwards and I could still feel you could the still world feel, moving. Yeah. I was like... Uh, yeah, if you're a coaster fan, Wild Thing, A+. Plus. Uh, good stuff. Anyways. Anyways, like... Thank wow. you for coming to the wild thing of podcasts. <laughs> the times they are a changing. Yeah, they are. As another Minnesotan would always? say. And uh, we just like, thanks for being here with us and continuing to support us and our show no matter what happens in the world of magic. Good luck, High Five is here, like hanging out yeah. with you, being your buds uh, through all of the crazy things, through every roller coaster dip and dive. We, yeah. we will be here hanging out with you. So thanks for being there for us. And we hope that we can be there for you, too. As another Minnesota artist would say, we only want to see you standing in the purple rain. <laughs> <laughs> How many Minnesota references can we get in this show? <laughs> Go to uh, patreon.com slash of Magic, play in our tournament, support our show, uh, check out our doc. Doctors Without Borders fundraiser. Take a screenshot of your dono. Send it to glhfmagic at gmail.com. Uh, check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash goodluckhigh5. We've got so many videos up yeah. there. Commander video coming pretty soon for all you Commander fans. Um, like, just nonstop stuff from party us on. to you. And yeah, party on. Party on. <laughs> <laughs>